Yeah, what is this yaoi thing all about? I am so c confused. And if it can happen to Tweak and Craig, could it happen to any of us? Hoo hoo hoo, you don't even know the half of it. Welcome to all to Friendly Faces Everywhere. Well, here I thought in Crack Baby Athletic Association they said Slash wasn't real, and now we have this. So yeah, South Park pulls another great move and bases an episode on a seemingly throwaway line in the city part of town. And its name is Tweak X Craig. Or is the X silent like in Hunter Hunter? Tweak Craig, Tweak Slash Craig, tw You know what, I'm just going to call it the Creek episode. Right, so maybe I should mention some background before digging into this one, because I've been waiting for this kind of an episode for a long time. I've already mentioned I've dabbled in South Park fanfiction, and if you hadn't visited the fanfiction.net South Park section, you'd most likely be surprised with the oversaturation of stories of cute ten-year-old boys making out. Cartman included, it's okay because he lost his weight before the fic and is totally beefy and hot now. Right, if this is such a popular trend, why am I surprised that this episode exists at all? After all, nothing escapes South Park's social commentary, does it? Well, in a way, yes, but it doesn't exactly tackle fandom issues. Actually, it makes a conscious effort not to do so. I heard in an interview from around 2005, Matt Stone even said they don't read South Park fanfiction in fear it'd be good. A week before this episode aired, people went insane. The showmakers actually asked fangirls, and fanboys, hey, let's not assume they were all female, to submit their Creek artwork which would then be featured in the episode. Over 1,500 images were sent, and keep in mind this was only in the US. Hell, some people even boycotted the offer because they accused Trey and Matt of kink-shaming. Did I like the episode? I did, but not for the reasons I thought I would. My stance on Slash and South Park as a widespread phenomenon is best represented in such fanfiction as JVM's... uh... fanfiction? Phantom Debate, or Marcus Absent's Jude this is pretty fucked up right here, in that who cares who fucks whom, and if it does it for you, why not use actual gay characters like Big Gay Owl and Mr. Slave instead of straight ones? Okay, maybe in the case of Cartman I'm not surprised, but in any case, portraying ten-year-old kids having sex is still pretty creepy no matter what gender orientation, but okay, never mind. What I expected was a similar satire of shipping in general. We got that in some ways, but in others it's bizarrely subverted and played straight at the same time. It's... it's funny because I said straight. Anyway, it could be said that they don't go the obvious route with their satire. Some of the dialogue that a chilla couple gets is very much similar to a typical coming out story. Lines like, I can't be something everybody wants me to be, and I can't pretend to be something I'm not, are usually used the other way around in the context of sexual orientation versus standards of society. Huh, I just realised Craig says that line when Tweak literally visits him in his backyard, I should stop now. At the very end, it's unclear whether Tweak and Craig are actually gay, given that Cupid Me is just a figment of Cartman's imagination and couldn't possibly have used his arrows and piss to make them attracted to each other, but then again, I kind of like the ambiguousness. They might either be an actual item now, or they could simply be pretending to be such for the greater good. Shut it! Either way of interpretation is fine, because they are both interesting characters whose relationship was very vague before, and each type of relationship now would be interesting to see. It's good that they did it with Tweak and Craig instead of two characters who had well-established relations before, let's say, Stan and Kyle or Butters and Cartman. Alright, Cartman. His subplot was an interesting comeback to the season 16 episode, Cartman Finds Love, in that we see the Cupid version of him again, and once again put his sexuality into question. Now I could quote several episodes like Chef Ghost Nanas and Le Petit Tourette, or the Imagination Land trilogy for one or the other team, but we're here to judge the story so that's not important. A few things I can say is that Cartman being in love with himself is very much believable to me, and Leanne's reaction at the end is priceless. What's more, the subplot is kind of an interesting parallel to Garrison's character revolution in Cherokee Hair Tampons, in that he uses an imaginary being who he says is gay to project his own issues onto. I'm curious if they do anything more with it. My one big problem with this episode is that once again we spread the focus on all the Asian girls instead of focusing on Liza, who was introduced in that now pointless clip of you not yelping, or Kevin and Nesta, who I guess have no chance of being half Chinese again, or any actual characters instead of a nameless crowd for that matter. Seriously, this happens every time the episode is about the girls, am I the only one who sees the pattern? Speaking of Kevin, why is Cartman dry humping him? Well, uh, anyway. There are some nice background details like Butters still being injured from his suicide attempt in safe space, and David still hanging out with the other boys. In addition, there is plenty of character development introduced, in the broad sense of the term. Craig tinkering with his bike, for example, that's kind of interesting. 
Does he do that often, given his interest in Red Racer? How about the montage where we find out about the mayor's dead husband? These are the things that turn this episode from a good one to a great one. On the other hand, we do have some continuity errors, like Leslie suddenly changing hair colour, and Wendy still being the student body council president despite resigning in Dances with Smurfs. Though I guess from what we find out later on, the former might have been intentional, and Cartman probably resigned right after that episode. All in all, in spite of the few flaws I mentioned, this might actually be one of my favourite episodes of the season. It did more than just entertain me or make me think, which is what I usually expect from South Park. It actually changed my attitude to shipping a little. I used to look down on it, deeming it to kind of appeal to the lowest common denominator. I even treated the one couple I actually shipped as a guilty pleasure, not something I could ever be proud of. Recently, however, I've warmed up to it gradually. The Creek episode wasn't a breaking point or anything, but it certainly contributed in some way. Now, I still can't say I can be proud of a ship, but I realise it can be a useful writing tool as long as used correctly. Relationships between characters, no matter whether platonic or romantic, develop their personalities, which is always interesting to see. Now let's wait and see if my OTP makes it to the canon! Maybe we should go away Put cares aside for just a day The world we face is not so big Not if we are strong like Tweak and Krieg Let's go back to when it was new Weren't we such happy people do? Life was simple, problems gay We had it all, a rock like Tweak and Krieg Darkness we all seek A perfect love like Craig and Tweak We must fight for of the corner We must hold Tweak and Craig with the highest honor Gamba! Uh, excuse me, why are you doing this? Oh, hi, Craig Oh, hi, Mark 